Hi there. Welcome to DIY Comics FAQ. I'm GE Gallus and I'm here to answer your questions about indie comics, graphic novels, web comics, scenes, self-publishing, storytelling, you name it. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe below. Today I am answering a question from Nevadag at Seal Whiskers on Twitter. They ask, I'd be interested to know how you take such a large project and reduce it into smaller, more manageable tasks in order to overcome the inertia that can result from feeling overwhelmed. Um, this is, of course, a really great question, especially if you're working on a really big project. The simple answer is to break your giant project down into baby steps. I do this all the time. Um, my project, The Poet and the Flea, is a rather big one. Um, it's three volumes. I finished volume one, but I'm still working on two and three. And I began working on The Poet and the Flea in 2012, and it's already 2020. Um, so it is a rather big project, um, but I just keep taking it a step at a time to work towards my goal of finishing it. Um, same with my other graphic novel projects. Um, they're usually a hundred pages at least, if not more. Um, so it's a big commitment, it's a big project, and I try to break it down into steps that are more manageable. So for the purposes of this video, I have broken down the steps that I take to make a graphic novel or a comic. Um, and I was surprised to see that it's 10 steps. That was just a coincidence. Um, and of course you can take what steps you like. You don't have to follow exactly what I do, um, but I hope that you can glean something useful from all the steps that I take in my creative process. So I'll be going through the steps one by one and talking a little bit about them. And then probably down the line, I'll do future episodes to break down each step even more and talk about it further. So step number one is seed of an idea. I discussed this already in my third episode, so if you haven't watched that yet, you might wanna go back and watch it. Um, this is simply finding a small, interesting idea from which everything else can grow. With The Poet and the Flea, the seed of my idea was the ghost of a flea painting and William Blake and everything grew organically from there. Um, so this is just basically finding the topic, the theme, the characters, whatever that you need to start telling your story. It can be anything as long as it's something that you're passionate about and you can develop and stick with for a long time. Step number two is notes and brainstorming. Um, this is when I just write down, take notes about everything I'm thinking about for a certain project so I don't forget anything. Um, it doesn't have to be organized, it can be messy, it can be in a notebook, it can be in a document on your computer, it can be on cards like this so that you can move them around easily. Whatever works for you, um, this is just a step that I take to make sure that everything that I'm thinking about, I won't forget it and I'll be able to put it into my script and my drawings later. Step number three is research. Of course, this is a really important step for me because I tend to do a lot of historical fiction. Um, so I want to have a lot of historical details, a lot of facts. Um, researching the costumes, researching the clothing that they wore during that time period, doing research so that nothing is glaringly out of place, like you don't want to have a pocket watch on a character in a time period where people didn't have pocket watches yet. Um, so of course research is really important if you're doing something historical, but even if you're not doing something historical, I highly encourage you to do research. This can be as simple as watching movies or reading books that'll help 
inspire you. Like if I was going to do, for instance, a comic book or a graphic novel or a webcomic about aliens, perhaps I would go back and watch some alien movies or read some alien books and see what other people had done in the past. Um, so maybe you can find inspiration there and try to do something different from what people have done before. Um, so even if you're not doing something historical, I think research is important. Like for instance, if you're doing slice of life, maybe you want to take some photographs of your office so that you can go home and look at those photos when you're trying to draw your office in your comic. Um, so I highly encourage research of any kind. Step number four is the initial sketches. Um, this can be anything. This is kind of like the visual version of brainstorming. It could be character designs. It could just be trying to get down your ideas on paper before you forget them. Um, it can be developing different elements of your comic. Um, so this is the visual component of brainstorming. Um, just to get ideas and keep them in a place that you'll remember where they are and you can reference them later when you're writing your script or you're drawing your thumbnails or you're drawing your final pages. For this step, your drawings don't have to be wonderful, they don't have to be perfect. It's fine even if they're stick figures as long as it's a note that helps you remember. If you're a writer and you don't draw and you're going to have to find someone else to draw it. Um, this might be an important step too, even if you can't draw, um, just to get your ideas down and to try to be able to express your thoughts to your artist. Step five is writing an outline. Um, this is an outline of the story and or plot. Um, and I'm going to go into further detail on how to do an outline in a future episode um, because this is a really important step. It's kind of the foundation of your script. Um, so an outline is pretty much the beginning, middle, and end of your story. And you just want to get all of that down and try to organize it so you'll have an easier time writing your script. Number six is the script. Um, this is a big step. It's a complicated step. The more work you do for your outline, I think you'll have an easier time writing your script. There's no set format for script writing a graphic novel or a comic. I'm not a Marvel or DC comic book person, um, so I'm. they might have a format. You should just Google Marvel script format and I'm sure something will come up. Um, but if you're doing an independent comic, if you're self-publishing your own comic, you can do a script however you feel comfortable. Um, it might be helpful to do it in a screenplay format because then it's, you know, you have a set format. But as long as you can read it, especially if you're both the writer and the artist, as long as you can understand your own script, that's the most important part. Unlike a screenplay where you're trying to cater what you write to whoever is going to read it, so like the producer, the director, you don't want to have a lot of superfluous detail, you don't have to worry about that for your comic book script. I encourage you to put as much detail as you would like in your script because those are your notes for when you're going to turn your script into illustrated comic book pages. Um, so don't be afraid to put those details in, especially if they will help you in the future. Some people like to break down their script into pages, so it'll say page one, panel one, and then panel two, panel three, and so on. Um, you can do that. That's a great way to do it. You don't have to do it that way. I usually don't do it that way because I tend to use the thumbnailing step to determine what panels go on what pages. Um, so wh however you feel comfortable, whatever is going to work for you is what you should do. Step number seven is thumbnails. This is basically when I plan out the final illustrations of my comic. 
but it's a really rough sketch how the page is going to be divided up into different panels um, how the figures the characters are going to look on each page um, this is a really important step and I like to go through and try to do all of the thumbnails before I start drawing final pages but that doesn't always happen sometimes I get tired of doing thumbnails and I'll start working on the finished pages as I go along and you know skip between the two go back and forth between the two um, so however you want to draw a thumbnail there's no right or wrong answer of course it can be just stick figures it can be more detailed as long as if you're the illustrator as long as you can understand your own thumbnails that's the best thing you don't have to worry about it looking good it's just simply a plan a map as to how you're going to approach your finished comic book page step number eight is the final comic book pages the final illustrated pages there are multiple steps that I take within this step eight um, I tend to use traditional tools so not digital I tend to use pencils you know paper um, so my process I start out with penciling the images then I ink them um, and then I might shade them by hand I like using Copic grayscale markers that's how I do the poet and the flea um, but sometimes I will scan them scan my comic book pages and color them or shade them on a digital program like Photoshop um, so this drawing your final comic book pages is going to have different steps depending on what tools you want to use it's of course completely acceptable to do all of this digitally I encourage you if you are more comfortable with digital art then do it that way if you're more comfortable with traditional tools do it that way a combination is great too just do it however you feel is comfortable and however you feel will get the best result for your comic book pages um, so of course this is a really big time-consuming step um, and I try to break this down further I usually work on a batch of pages I think I had mentioned I do about 30 to 50 pages of the poet and the flea at one time um, so then I can work on different steps at different times like in that batch of 30 pages some of them might have been penciled and then I'm working on the pen for other pages and I'm working on the grayscale markers on other pages um, so just find what you're most comfortable with for this step there are no right or wrong answers if you are doing indie comics web comics self-publishing do whatever feels best step nine is scanning this is not going to apply to you if you're doing digital art but if you're doing more traditional tools like i do then i have to spend time scanning that into the computer um, you can try to find a good scanner for your home or you can go to a company and get it professionally scanned um, for the poet and the flea I spent some money to get it professionally scanned and it turned out really really well so much better than on my home computer um, so that might be something you want to consider when you're scanning your work if you have to scan it step number 10 is Photoshop and or InDesign um, I tend to use both of these programs I guess this doesn't matter so much if you're doing digital comics um, you might be using procreate which is a great tool um, there are a bunch of different tools you can use on your computer or on your iPad or other tablet I tend to use Photoshop because that's what I've been using for many years since middle school In middle school I taught myself how to do Photoshop and so I'm comfortable with it and then I actually took a class on how to do InDesign and it's been really really useful um, Photoshop I use it for shading or coloring my art and InDesign I use it for formatting graphic design um, doing the dialogue in certain cases um, so InDesign is more for publishing so I use InDesign to prepare a document to send to my printer 
Um, it's a really useful publishing tool. If you don't know how to use InDesign, maybe you want to learn how. Um, I can definitely do more videos in the future, more episodes about Photoshop and InDesign if you're interested. So please send me your questions about Photoshop and InDesign. So those were the 10 steps that I take when I'm working on a graphic novel or a comic book project. Um, you can definitely use these steps if they're helpful to you. Um, you should develop your own steps if that's easier. Um, these are just a guideline to kind of help you figure out how to break everything down into baby steps. Making a comic with many pages is obviously a big project to take on so that's why a lot of people encourage those just starting out making comics to start with a smaller project um i kind of threw that out the window my first graphic novel i made in high school was 88 pages um, and that was a big learning experience for me. And then my next big project is The Poet and the Flea, which I finished the first volume, which is 95 pages, and the second and third volumes are even longer. Um, so if you want to do a big project like that, you just have to know that it's going to take you a, a year or a number of years to make it a reality. Um, if you want to start with a smaller project, that's great. So this is my zine, Big Fish Eat Little Fish. I actually did this one year as an Inktober project. I didn't want to just do separate illustrations like most people do for Inktober. I wanted to do a 30-page narrative comic. Um, so a 30-page project is a pretty interesting size to start it. Um, this one is similar to my other comic, Pawn My Soul, where each page is a panel, so technically it's 30 panels. Um, and so this might be a good place to start. It might be challenging to do 30 pages, but it's also kind of rewarding because then you can publish it into your own zine. Um, and it's a good size to share online as well, either like posting a thread on Twitter or posting it on a different webcomic site. So that's just something to think about. Um, maybe you want to start smaller with 10 or 15 pages. Um, maybe you even want to go a little bigger with 50 pages. I would probably call a 50 page comic a graphic novella perhaps. There's nothing wrong with starting small. If you really want to tackle your big project right away, that's fine too. Um, just try to break it up into baby steps and it'll make everything simpler for you. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, please take these 10 steps and cater them to your own creative process. I will be breaking these steps down even further in future videos. Um, I'm planning on a upcoming episode about outlining. Outlining is such an important step that will make the steps that come next a lot easier for you. Um, so I look forward to talking more about outlining and all these different steps that go into making a comic book or graphic novel. If you'd like me to answer your question in a future episode, please reply below or tweet me at gegallas, that's G-E-G-A-L-L-A-S. If you want to support this channel, please subscribe. It's free, it's one easy click away, and you'll be helping me, you'll be supporting this channel and help me make future videos. That's all for now, see you next time.